the idea for today is to go over um, uh, some of the training material and like um, sections on the website related to the data science guidance sessions, right? Um, and so um, with that in mind, so if you go to the main, main website, chapter two currently points to the data science guidance sessions. And so it's not complete yet because there's a, a few pieces missing, right? Um, for example, I think I'm, um, uh, I'm missing the Calendly links for a couple of you. Um, um, and then we need to add like our research interests, um, technologies, what you're interested in learning for each of us. Uh, but we'll, we'll, you know, we'll finish this um, soon. Um, but the idea is that, like, um, you know, if someone asks you a question, right? Um, hey, like, do you have time to meet with me? Um, um, you know, about like some data science related questions or software or whatever. That we can just send an email, email and say, like, hey, can you please go to this website? And then this website will explain what these sessions are about, how to sign up, right? Um, and then they will also, it's also gonna have a, here some text about like how, you know, um, a little bit of, of help for people to frame their question and what is the information they should provide to us. Um, uh, and then we're gonna have some like rules of um, interaction rules. Um, I don't like using rules of engagement because that's like a war term, right? That's my understanding. <laughs> um, and so um, something that I started working on last night was on what will be the, the reports. Um, and this is based on some feedback from Maddie yesterday. Um, um, and so the idea is that there's, you know, uh, there's gonna be like a, uh, a little website with like uh, some public reports of the sessions. So and we'll go through all of these materials soon. Um, then finally, there's a becoming a, a data science guy. Um, I'm thinking of rearranging some of this. So I, I'm thinking of putting the how to sign up after the help us help you section um, and interaction rules. That way people will actually have read that. Oh, what did you mean if I just sign up immediately, right? <laughs> Without having read any of this. So that will be like the public facing uh, information. And like, um, I mean, I'll work on this uh, later this week. Um, 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 uh, but that's like, uh, okay, like, you know, someone is asking you for help, can you sign up, right? Um, part of what I wanna have here for the useful information is information that someone could provide on a Calendly link. So let me open mine, I'll open it in like, let me open it in an incognito window. Um, and so this is a specific link to, you know, uh, a session with me. Um, and so here I say like, oh, you know, if you want, please provide information. And I link back to the help us help this section of the website, right? So let's say I find a set, you know, a session with me, um, Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. Like, Zoom is getting on my way. Uh, right. uh, let's confirm. And so here it says like, please share anything. Um, and so that's where, you know, that information about that's inf you know what information you should you should provide as the person requesting help. Um, um, this is where they should put it, and it should be the type of information that we that we want them. Um, to provide to us. Um, so, you know, it's like, I guess this tech box can get pretty long. Um, 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 let me just copy paste this. Um, yeah, so they could, you know, put, they could copy paste some code, for example, if that if that's like what they're having some problem problems with, but it might be best just to have people highlight what are the R packages that they're having trouble with, um, if that's the case, or like, um, what is the path to the data, uh, things like that. Um, and that will be the information that us as data science guides um, can review 
up to like 24 hours in advance um, uh, before a session such that uh, we can prepare it to a meeting. Um, all right. Um, so on the main website, there's a um, um, helping others chapter uh, near the end. Um, and so let me go over a bit of this again, um, what this chapter here has. So this one is mostly complete actually now. Um, and so <clears throat> here I provide a little bit of like general information for um, to say like, okay, like if you're helping someone, you might have to use a combination of real text, drawings, and math equations. Um, uh, and uh, some people will understand one of these explanations more clearly than the other ones. And so I provide here a full example on like explaining what is like a, the, the coefficient of a simple linear regression model. Uh, it's called simple because it has a, uh, just one explanatory variable here, um, x. Um, so uh, this example is like uh, uh, showcases that like people might need help understanding a, a sentence like this that says like beta one is the average change in our outcome y for a one unit increase in our, in our explanatory variable x, right? And so that type of text, although very precise, um, is um, not as intu intuitive to some people. And so that's potentially the starting point, is the starting point um, of a question. And then later on, maybe you need to do a, a drawing. And so this is actually, you know, with the pandemic times, this might be a bit hard. Um, I mean, I have a, a simple blackboard and then like, sometimes I try to make a drawing here, right? But like, um, it's not as um, straightforward as like meeting in a, in a room in person or having a piece of paper around to make some drawings. Um, um, so that's one type of explanation. The other one is like making some math here. And so um, actually this week I did something like this, like a math explanation, uh, right? Uh, it was for a more complicated like uh, linear model. Uh, but that's just like, um, just a reminder of like, there's two different ways that you can try to explain things. Right? Um, so then, then here I give a bit of a, a of a framework of what the role will be of a data science guide, right? So uh, a lot of times it's just trying to you know try to explain a concept in in different ways, right? Because um, um, you know we uh, some let's say someone is not understanding math or the text, right? Then we need to come up with like a drawing or something that will try to uh, make the problem more understandable. Um, um, and so, uh, actually for this part of explaining a concept creatively, that's where I think like knowing, um, where we can find some useful pictures, um, is also quite useful, um, uh, which is related to a point further down in this, um, section. Um, wait, sorry, actually. It's not further down in this chapter. I think it's under the um, um, bootcamp source materials. Yeah, uh, bootcamp like um, here. Uh, I link to work from Allison, uh, Pres Mains Hill, Desiree de Leon, and Allison Horst. In particular, here like her stat illustrations. Um, which she you know keeps growing and growing, but has a lot of like uh, oh actually this is new. Here are some new drawings about like understanding what a derivative is, for example. Um, um, uh, right. Um, so all these drawings can be you know useful for explaining different concepts. For example, let's you know let's say you're trying to understand what the mutate function does in the plier, right? So this drawing might, for example, here might be useful. Um, things like that, such that you don't have to start from scratch. Um, so I should probably link to this specific bullet point from the Helping Others Guide. Okay. 
Another thing we might do a lot is Google searching, right? Because we might know terms for finding things or providing ideas. And then uh, overall, like we want, we're providing a, a, a platform, right? A baseline platform for everyone to have like a common set of tools that they're gonna be using, right? That's why we've been spending time also on the boot camps, such that everyone is like familiar with that common uh, baseline platform, right? Of like, let's use our student projects, let's use Git, GitHub, um, with one uh, main branch at a time. Um, let's um, use the here package, things like that. Um, okay, so, so far this is like mostly things that I mentioned in the past already. Um, so let's go over a bit of the training here. So um, um, this is like the part that is a bit new. Um, so, uh, actually, a lot of this text was here, but like the links are new. So, uh, um, first of all, I want everyone to remember that it's okay to not know the answer to something. Right? Um, and so, you should always feel safe to say like, I don't know, right? Uh, but then immediately after you say, I don't know, then you can also say like, I'll search for the answer uh, for next week, for next session. Um, uh, you can ask for help from the rest of the team, right? So you can bring it up in our weekly sessions. Or um, you could also like divide and conquer and be like, hey, someone else, please, you know, please do this question, right? Um, and so what I want to spend a bit of time today is like, um, I try to adapt some of the teaching assistant training materials that I went through like six years ago or more. <laughs> um, uh, for today, uh, but actually some of them um, were more like um, specific to being a teaching assistant in front of a bunch of students. Um, so, uh, and then the other one is, um, that is a bit hard is like, uh, um, part of it was doing a, a, a role playing, um, but it's a little bit hard because um, uh, uh, like uh, at that point, like it was uh, multiple teaching assistants that were doing the role playing, right? Uh, right now is like <laughs> the first time that I'm training you. So maybe we'll be able to do that later on uh, once we have um, been doing this for a little bit um, and have new people join us. Okay, so, um, so let me go over the Bean uh, Data Science Guide. So that is this set of slides over here. Um, which I adapted from uh, Terry Usher and Emily Huang, uh, um, who made this uh, the original set of slides. Um, uh, so, um, um, what are the benefits of being a data science guy? Right. Uh, um, actually, let me make this a bit more dynamic. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so uh, what are the benefits? Um, so um, you can think of this as a, an opportunity to, to learn how to explain challenging concepts to other people. Um, and that is like a skill that uh, is high in high demand in, uh, in data science um, in general um, and in uh, any right like type of teamwork. Um, and so this will be valuable when you're working with uh, collaborators um, on, in the future, because um, you're gonna learn a bit how to communicate with them and also how to explain things. Um, and then also this will be a, as a, this can serve as a, as a way to motivate you to understand some of these challenging concepts on a deeper level than, deep, deeper level than what you uh, currently know them, right? Um, and so, you know, it's only until like someone asks you a question and you're like, oh, I don't know the answer to this, let me check about it, right? That you realize that like there was more for you to learn, right? On something that maybe you thought you already um, uh, knew. Also, you can also see this as, a, uh, as an opportunity to practice consulting skills, um, um, which uh, can be useful in different settings. Um, and then you can also, Use this as a way to meet people from multiple departments um, at Hopkins and Lieber or like different labs and teams. Um, 
um, so as a way to be more uh, connected. Um, what are some of the qualities of a good data science guide? You have to be prepared, right? You should know the material before. Um, uh, and so knowing the material here also involves like um, researching a little bit on the question that someone gave you before you actually meet them in person. Um, uh, uh, oh, this was a, uh, do the, I need to change this. Instead of do the assignments, it's like do like, um, do some of the exercises be, before you go over with them with a person that asks for help. Um, this is in, in the case of like, let's say you told them to to, uh, to do some of the courses of the Chromebook, uh, Chromebook based data science um, um, uh, set of courses, right? So you might want to just refresh your memory a little bit before you meet with them. Um, um, just so that you are uh, aware of the context of you know what you refer people to. Uh, you have to also be calm and patient, right? Uh, um, that is tricky, right? Because sometimes people might uh, might be a bit impatient, might be uh, anxious about their analysis or their questions, um, right? You don't know all the pressures that they're going through, um, so um, it's our role here to be calm and patient. Um, then you also need to be a good listener. <laughs> so, uh, right, like, uh, um, so like, you know, hear, hear them out, hear what, the, hear what they're telling you, uh, and that can help you identify like um, ways in, you, in, in which you can like that, dissect the problem into a smaller problem. Um, and just again, like be honest if you don't know the answer type of thing, right? When helping someone, like uh, remember who your audience is, right? So, um, so uh, let's say you're helping a biologist, right? Um, and so they might not be as familiar with like some of the terms that we use. Um, um, and so you should remember that your audience might not know some of these terms, and to try to try to use you know more descriptive terms, such that. They, such that they can follow your conversation, right? Um, uh, this is more for like a class setting, right? But or, or uh, but you you should try to speak clearly and loudly enough, right? Um, 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 and I think most of you will have an easier time than me because you're native English speakers. <laughs> With that, uh, um. And then, you know, sometimes you need to be creative, you know, try different approaches to explain the same topic. That's a part of what I've, I've, I've mentioned to you already about um, um, using math, uh, drawings, et cetera, or different words, for example. Um, so you can use a visual tool, um, not only like uh, uh, verbal ones, because um, sometimes a drawing can make a big difference. So be creative. Um, you could also, you know, prepare to think about potential solutions to a question before you, you know, try to explain them to someone else. Um, but this is where, like, I think practice um, will make us all better. Um, um, and that's also why, like, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you to, to uh, answer one question per week on the Bioconductive Support website, just to practice a bit this section. Right, of, of answering questions. A little bit of etiquette. So you should try to show up on time, um, right? Um, um, uh, like, especially now with like Zoom meetings and stuff, right? Uh, sometimes people have back-to-back -back meetings. And so, um, um, you know, just try to keep that in mind. Uh, if you cannot make a session, it's okay to cancel, right? Just you know, do that in advance as soon as you can. Um, this one about watching your language is like, um, um, it's similar to the staying calm, um, and being receptive. So you don't want to like, um, lose your calm or, um, it can also be interpreted as like, uh, uh, avoiding a specific, um, um, uh, specific like terms or idioms that other people might not know. 
Um, uh, and uh, this was more common on the on the teaching side. Um, I don't think it will be as applicable here, but like, um, uh, like if you're teaching in front of a bunch of students, sometimes people will like answer in a in another language other than English, and then at that point you're like uh, losing you know a portion of your audience. Um, I'll take that point out of this slide because it doesn't really apply to us. Then remember to balance your time, right? Um, like, uh, uh, we, you know, we're still doing other things. Um, um, and so uh, one way to balance your time is to communicate with the other uh, guides, right? And so that's why we're gonna have a weekly uh, half an hour meeting to go over uh, what has happened in, in, in our sessions. Um, um, to also like, um, uh, brainstorm ways to try to answer a specific question or like suggestions on how to deal with a specific situations that might come up. Uh, but also it's for dividing and conquering, right? So let's say that I get asked the next flow question and then like instead of me spending a lot of time trying to learn next flow, I can just be like, hey, like maybe you should actually meet with Nick, right? Um, type of thing, right? Um, 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 all right. So let me pause the recording and see if All right. so <clears throat> um so the next thing I want you to do is just open this link that says um that um has a set of characteristics here or situations. Um and so I'll leave this open. Um, and, and so what you could actually do is like make a copy of it and then just like um, categorize these things as whether like these are good characteristics or or not. Um, um, uh, and then we'll we'll discuss them. So I'll stop recording this part. Um, so let me resume recording. All right. So I actually just copy pasted the the uh, what we had here above, and then we highlighted whether it was good or bad. Um, some of them are a bit more in the gray zone, so we left them as um, in gray. Um, all right. So let me close this. Um, I am. So the next um, set of materials that I have um, is um, there's three papers here that I've linked to. These three papers are uh, from a statistical consulting class that I took. Um, and these were part of the very first session of that course. Um, so, um, um, they're like fairly old and they're like, I mean, they're specific to statistics, uh, but actually a lot of these ideas still apply. Uh, so like 1974, 58, 82. Um, so I put all of the links here if you want to access them, access them. Um, and so let me open actually the, the files I used years ago. Um, um, uh, they have what I highlighted years ago when I read this. Um, um, so the role of the statistician, scientist, or shoe clerk, I thought it was a very uh, provocative, provoking title. Um, and so this is really like, you might ask yourself the question, like, am I a scientist or a shoe clerk? And here they mean shoe clerk as a negative thing. Um, as like, am I just like someone that just um, um, uh, does some um, smaller tasks um, or um, um, you know, it's not really involved in, in asking questions. Um, and so uh, like really behind that question is just, you're asking the question of what is the primary responsibility of the statistician in a collaborative study? Um, 
Um, and so, for example, the shoe clerk, their job might be the, eh. um, my Adobe went crazy, sorry. Um, the shoe clerk, their role might be to, um, to please the, the customer enough to earn their commission, right? Um, um, and so like, like if you're just pleasing people and doing whatever they want you to do, right? Instead of sometimes questioning them, um, then that's how you can end up being a bit of a shoe clerk. Right? Um, 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 but then also like a statistician might be involved sometimes like in a, in a collaborative project where there's multiple conflicting views, right? Um, and so there the statistician can avoid like a bit of trouble by playing a passive or neutral role. Um, um, and it might come naturally. Um, what else does it say? Um, um, yeah, Zoom is getting all the way, sorry. Um, um, uh, and so sometimes like, you know, what people want from a statistician is just a set of complicated looking sentences. Right, that will you know make everyone seem like oh like we did a lot of like complicated statistics etc. Right, um, and so at that point, really, what they want the statistician for is just for their official blessing in the decision of you know, in the decisions that they have made. So people might come to us and ask us like, okay, is this analysis good or not? Right, um, um, and so um, the easy answer might be like, okay. Uh, let me look at let me look at what you have, and I'll tell you what is good or not. But the more complicated um, way of dealing with that is like by asking questions. I mean, like why you did this, why you did that, etc. And so that might involve like a longer set of sessions than just a single session of like, okay, I think you did a good job, or I think you did a, a there's something bad here, right? Um, um, uh, Highlighting is sticking a bit. Right. Um, so, um, the idea is also that you should have a protective structure. I'm reading here on the right side that can protect you from the pressures of, of the role. And so, that's also my function, right? right. Um, if someone is trying to pressure you guys, like, um, uh, I can try to step in and I like take away some of that pressure, right? Um, or, um, you know, you know uh, I mean, confront the situation really and be like, hey, like, why are you pressuring, you know, X person type of thing? Um, um, so, there's, I mean, there's a, a couple more things in this paper, but I thought it could be uh, good if you want to read it. Um, um, uh, the the questioning statistician by Thini. Um, this one is a bit of a longer paper, but it um, but it's like a more detailed guide on like what are the type of questions that you might want to be asking when you're meeting someone, right? So, um, and it's a uh, it's a bit more statistics focused. So there's stuff about like um, uh, like. Uh, uh, what is it like? What is your experiment? What are the samples you have, etc. Um, um, so I won't really go over this one, uh, but like this could be a good reference if in case uh, you need one um, for um, uh, for like some set of questions that you might want to ask people when they uh, meet with you, um, and especially if it involves more like statistics. Um, I know a few of you are interested in learning more about statistics. So this could be like a good, um, um, good reference for, for that. Um, and so uh, the last one is this one called the impertinent questionnaire, um, the scientist guide to the statistician's mind. Uh, um, and so, uh, so this is like saying like, okay, yes, yeah, the statistician has to provide the math and like language, um, here they say ornaments, right? So those are like fancy looking sentences for a paper. But in, uh, in uh, William's point of view, they also um, 
uh, have the irritate, irritate, eh, how do you pronounce that? <laughs> Irritatingly annoying task that they must ask the scientists impertinent questions. Um, and so this is not like, okay, we're asking questions just because we're judging you or like, um, um, uh, like, it's not like we're trying to judge people and be like, hey, I think you did a bad job type of thing. Um, it's, uh, so it's not really um, about that, but we want to learn more um, about the study and like try to come help people um, um, uh, explore their data in different ways um, or, um, you know, make sure that they've covered some of their bases and say that. Um, and so this actually is pretty interesting because uh, like uh, uh, William has here says like if the person is helping someone in statistics, um, uh, but they're also uh, wise in the way of human beings, uh, then they might ask this question dip diplomatically or even not even ask the questions at all, right? So that is a bit of a, uh, I guess, like a more um, higher difficulty difficulty level of reaching that. But like um, um, uh, one way to do that is to guide a discussion uh, 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 without having to ask the questions, right? So. Um, uh, so there's some like, specific examples here on that, um, of like, what are some of the questions you might want to ask? Um, um, uh, and so, uh, you know, we, we need to ask questions before the experiment is done. Um, the question itself that a person is asking might not be completely defined yet. Um, they might not have the data, maybe the model itself is a bit weird. Um, so let me skip some of that, this stuff, um, because, um, uh, near the end of it, there's an epilogue here, which says, um, it says like, is it, is the statistician's responsibility to ask these questions, not to answer them, right? So like, if you ask a question and they're like, oh, I don't know, what do you think, right? So uh, um, you can voice your opinion, but like you shouldn't feel responsible for knowing the answers to some of these questions, right? Um, some of them could be like about biology and things like that. Um, 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 uh, and you, you know, through asking these questions, we might also be helping the scientists or the other people because they might not be aware of some of the questions here. Um, um, and you know they might want to consider exploring themselves the answer to those to those questions. Um, um, so um, yeah, so that's I guess the point here of uh, this epilogue here. Um, cool. So let me stop recording. See if you have any any questions. All right. Um, so I mentioned that this um, papers were part of um, a, consult a statistical consulting class that I took. And so um, there's a bunch of slides um, that I have from that class that uh, I think I can share with you individually. Um, uh, but uh, there's always a possibility of also taking this course at Hopkins uh, if they still have it. I don't actually know if they have it. But um, I mean, it talks about consulting in more in more general terms than what we'll be doing here. And so um, I just wanted to you know, give a little plug for that course um, by Carol Thompson. Um, um, so with that, let's go to, let's continue on um, this chapter on helping others. Um, so, Something that I, you know, existed in, in theory, but now actually exists in practice as um, I've been thinking about different ways of implementing this, but I wanted to implement an internal sessions log. Um, and so uh, we use a lot of Google tools and I thought that would be the easiest 
way to go forward. And so I shared with you a Google spreadsheet that like, you know, anyone else that wants to open this link, I want to try to open it in incognito, you know, needs to log in. And so they can't, you know, they can't see the data. Uh, so it's private in that way. And I thought like, we try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, we would here add an entry for every, every meeting or something that we do. And so I added a column here called pipe. Um, 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 that will be like DSGS for the data science guidance sessions. Let's say GitHub for an issue. This is something that Maddie brought up yesterday. Or let's say BioC for the Microcontroller support website. And we'll have your name and then the name of the person that you help. So here I was like putting like you know, um, some random names, let's say Leo 2, Leo 4. And let's say that this person you know, met with me twice, right? Leo 3. Then we can have the date in, um, in the year dash month dash day format. Um, and then here we can put the actual text that we get from the help request. Right? So let you know, if someone uses Canonly to meet with you, right, you'll get an email, and in that email it will contain their help request. So you can paste that, and actually it could be a multi-line text, right? So you can paste any multi-line text entries here that you get. Um, although um, if they have anything that is like personal in nature or whatever. Um, I would ask you to, to please edit that. Um, and that's why I added um, a column here called the, pre, uh, the private team notes. Uh, and so you can keep anything here private that we want to keep track of, but that we don't want to make uh, public. And so uh, you'll see how this gets reflected into the, into the public session log website. Then on the public notes, you can actually put here like, uh, 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 markdown syntax also in the help request so you know you, uh, here I'm like having uh, some public notes but I could even add like a bit of code um, 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 uh, and so I'm using uh, control enter um, to just keep writing on the same entry on the same um, entry uh, on the Google spreadsheet. Uh, so let me actually add a space if I can, yeah. Um, 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 so these are like, um, at the end of every session, you might wanna send like one or two links, right? Like some other references for things that they, people might be interested in reading more about during their week um, related to the question that they ask you, right? So, uh, I only put a, a couple of, like, of links here. Um, so this will keep growing as we use it, right? And only us will be able to access this information. Um, and so how is that used? So, um, um, so I made a new GitHub repo that uh, I need to give you access to. Um, um, the GitHub repo is all public, though, the code. And so let me, on the chat, put that link. Um, all right. So, uh, I mean, you can clone it, et cetera. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to open, I already actually opened that one on my computer. And so you'll notice that there's, on the main uh, repository, there's a script called, um, Create chapters that are, and so let me uh, let me make that bigger, uh, so you can see it. Um, and so this particular script um, has a link to the Google spreadsheet, but again, it's um, it's hidden under a password. Um, I mean, you have to authenticate with your account. Um, and so the way you can act, act, uh, download the data is using the Google Sheets 4 package by Amy Bryan. And so the first time you run this, line number four here will run the authentication. Um, and so 
uh, once you do that, like once you have to do that at least one time on your computer, um, on each computer that you want to run this on, and it's gonna like save a little like file that uh, will verify your identity the next time you run this. But like um, uh, you could then also run like R script create chapters that are. Um, and you'll notice here that like it ran without issues because I mean I have the glue package and the Google Sheets 4 package and I have already verified my identity. And what this little script does is that it actually creates a set of uh, mark, um, markdown files automatically. So let me open this leo.r mv1 and um, and so you'll notice, for example, that that like edit that I made on the Google spreadsheet where I added the code print all for example, um, got uh, um, added to this um, um, R markdown. And so anyone here that has access to the repository will be able to update the R markdown files. Um, the function itself, the R code here might be of interest for you to read a bit more, although like I was doing this last night, so I don't, uh, yeah. I don't think I have any comments. <laughs> There's a couple of comments. Um, uh, so uh, I'm using the glue package to then say like, for every, uh, what, it, what this does is that it makes a chapter for every uh, uh, person that is helping. So in this case, my, I'm one of them. So that makes like Lee over here. But like, um, let me go back to the spreadsheet and let me add, let's say, um, Yes, yes, let's say that um, uh, let's say that my brother uh, was helping um, All right. Um, So if I add those edits there, let me go back to our studio. I'll run the script again. And now you'll see that it created a, a file called um, ale.rmd. And so here it creates a chapter for every person, every guide. And then it will make um, uh, a level two heading for every single person every single unique person um, that um, um, the guide is helping. Um, and then for every single entry, it will make a level three heading with the date as a title. And then for it, it will have a level, level four entries for the help requests and the public notes. So whatever, um, you know, this information that you put here on the help request cell and the public note cell, that information will be used then by the website here, by this by this function. Um, and so, if you do that, then if I go to the build tab for under um, under uh, our studio, I can click here and build a book locally. So you can actually see the book yourself. Um, so. Um, Right now it's running, 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 running. Um, and so this is how the public data, uh, data science guidance logs website is made. Um, so it'll be its own little book too. Um, and so here we have a chapter for like Ale and then another one for Leo. And so we can see the all the help requests and public notes. now. The names of the people you, you'll notice of the people asking for help will be anonymized. So they'll be like person four, person three, et cetera. Um, um, and then I also incorporate into it the, some graphs here that uh, uh, I think we'll be able, you know, we can edit them later on. But the idea is that these are some summary graphs of like how many sessions of each type have we had in you know weeks across a year, um, um, sorry, this is 
this is uh, here we have one per per person, one line per person. Um, then like as a team overall. Um, and then this one was uh, uh, oh, sorry, this is the overall like across all three types. So via CV, VSGS and GitHub. Um, I don't know, I don't know why there's three points here. It's only supposed to be two. Um, but um, that's the idea of that little website. Um, and so this in this way, in the future, let's say we wanna, you know, we have a question about um, 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 or let's say I wanna like, you know, I know that I we refer to the modern scientist um, um, book at some point, so you can oops, you can search here. Uh, modern scientists, right? And so this way, like, uh, we'll have a little like knowledge base, right? Um, um, and so the specific messages and stuff that we create will be helpful for us to help others, right? To find links that we've used in the past to, to help others with similar questions. And then we can also refer publicly to people and be like, hey, like, I think what you need to do, um, I think like, you know, the solution for like Leo person one, et cetera, in this particular session might be useful for you. That example code, let's say, right? Um, and so this will, you know, get more complex over time, but um, um, I thought that this would be like easy to maintain because we've all, I mean, we all use like Google spreadsheets and then uh, the, the R code, I, like, um, the R code, like really like running this um, um, R script create chapters type of thing. We could, I could run this weekly um, after our um, uh, after our meeting on the data science guidance sessions, right? Um, um, uh, and that way we have both like a, a private website Right, so here I'm really uh, relying on, on Google's authentication for the private side, right? Because we might have some uh, some private notes here, right? Uh, like for example, like an example of a private note could be like, oh, uh, let's say they met with me, and then I it could be like, oh, uh, uh, reassigned to to let's say Nick, for example, right? That could be a private team note, for example, um, or some other things there. Um, cool. So let me pause and see if you have it. Right. So, uh, so you can find the links to all of this from the internal sessions log section here. Um, um, but it will also be part of that, like the second chapter. Um, uh, the data science uh, data science guidance sessions uh, reports. Um, so I mean, I need to fix some stuff here about like um, getting the the image to sh to show properly. Um, but like um, I'm re I'm just reusing an image that that's made over here on the other repository um, from the main book. Um, cool. So we're almost done. Um, 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 getting started, that's something I've already covered in, uh, in our lab meeting, but the idea here is that it explains how you can set up your Calendly account. Um, uh, and I know several of you have made them in different ways. Um, 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 and so, the idea is that your the main leak for the data science guidance sessions that you want to use, that's the one we'll put on the sign up page. Um, um, so there's all those details there. Something I need from each of you though it's a bit more like um, uh, uh, like the research interest technologies and what you want to be learning about, so we can 
complete that portion of the website. Um, um, and I also need your Bioconductor support um, account username. I mean, it's like, this is like user ID, your profile number. Um, um, it's not actually a username. Um, so I need you guys to, to make to make those uh, uh, for this portion of the website. Um, um, and um, once we're ready to start this, uh, yes, Maddie. Well, like for me, I don't know. I have never used Bioconductor, so. Oh, well, I guess for you, we can make an exception, right? But for everyone else, um, I'll, um, uh, okay. yeah. Cool. Um, uh, so once you make your Bioconductor support account, then, uh, and once we, once we like, you know, once we have this information about each of you, I think next week we can start. Sorry, not next week because that's uh, we're still doing the um, the boot camps next week. But the week after that, we can then start um, uh, testing the data science guidance sessions with uh, with a couple of people. So um, so the goal is to try to have as much of this website ready by um, Wednesday next week. Uh, of the of the portions related to the support uh, to the data science guidance sessions, um, so um, you know, feel free to practice uh, filling out uh, the logs and stuff. And so, um, um, yeah. So I'm gonna stop the recording. I think that's it for today.